Amen. Do I have sound on this thing? <laughs> I said to uh, Kathy, oh, maybe we must just start this thing too. We've got so much stuff going here, it's not even <laughs> real. <clears throat> Amen. There's nothing. Is there something now? <laughs> well, good morning, everyone. Uh, I said to Kathy, it's, <laughs> it's going to be very difficult to preach here today because, I mean, after all these teachers and preachers, you really, and that's his pastors, so um, I am more happy in a situation where, can I tell you what just happened with me when I went quickly to the toilet? <laughs> Arthur said no. <laughs> no, I won't. I'm just joking. Anyway, yeah, thank you. Um, I, I, I just uh, want to thank Connie for the opportunity, and, and I want to thank all the ladies that blessed us this weekend. Uh, yeah. The What do you call them? The Grace Girls? No, the, the Jesus Girls. And everybody that helped. It was just a blessing. My wife, I think she's the most beautiful woman in the world. And uh, she blessed us with worship this weekend. So uh, today I want to talk about the compassion of Jesus. And I honestly believe, you know, in 1994, Arthur ruined my life. Um, introduced me to the message of grace. And, and uh, I'm just joking. It was the best thing that could ever happen to me. But um, I always, you know, thought that you know, this is this grace awakening, grace awakening, grace awakening, which is the truth. But I honestly believe that the end result of it is really the compassion and the love of God coming through the body of Christ to the lost, to the broken, to the downtrodden. You understand what I'm saying to you? And uh, I, I honestly believe that there is a restoration of compassion that's coming in the body of Christ. And, you know, we as pastors and ministers, I honor you all. We go through stuff on different levels. Um, not everybody is going through the same thing that you are going, but everybody is going through stuff. You agree with me on that? Yes. And one of the things with pastors is we tend to not share. We tend to keep it to ourselves. We tend to, man, I'm tough. I'm going through this. And I honor Bill Hagward. I'm going to use a little bit of Bill in my sermon and what happened in his church uh, we actually should have given him a chance to come and testify a little bit because there's amazing things happening there. But uh, Bill contact his congregation and say, I need prayer. <laughs> and, I, and I just think we as pastors, sometimes we have our families and sometimes we go through things. And how many of you agree with me that over the last two years, we have experienced quite a number of things um, that was not really nice. You agree with me? And uh, what is the best time for the enemy to, to bring the vision in the body of Christ is when there a, a, a pandemic hit the world. And then on top of that, okay, now we're going to give him a harder time by bringing the vision and strife like uh, Jeremiah was talking. But we came through. <laughs> Hallelujah. We came through. And God is good. And, and, and we are not called to, to lose at all because he's with us. Amen. Amen. And uh, I, I just want to encourage you today, talk about things. I want to wait for Al to come back because I'm going to talk about the real car that is out there. And, um, uh, um, but he's here. So <clears throat> there was a verse that, that, that before I found grace, there was a verse that really messes with me. Um, because I always felt like I fall short. I felt like I will never really um, experience this. And that verse is a very simple verse, a very short verse in Matthew 5, verse 8. In the background that I came out of the charismatic group that we were in, people saw a lot of visions, a lot of prophecy, a lot of things is going on there. But it says there, blessed are the pure in heart, for they will see God. And I always felt like my heart is not pure. <laughs> I always felt like, I miss out on God, uh, uh, and I miss out on visions, and I miss out on seeing in the Spirit, and I miss out understanding God. And the reason for that is because my heart is not pure. 
But when I found grace, I found out that he is actually freak. He's coming passionately after my heart. How many of you, is that a wrong word, freak? No. no. Anyway, you know, church going. But, but I realized that, that, that he's coming. How many of you agree with me since you found grace? There's one thing that you found out after a while. He's coming passionately after your heart. Yeah. This is why you found grace. Yeah. He, he has one thing in his mind, and that is to restore your broken heart. Yeah. To restore your heart that, was, that becomes sick because of the, 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 the legalism and, and all the things that you went through. And he, and, and he is with me. It took a long time for me because... Uh, uh, how many of you agree with me that actually the gospel is God's passionate love to persuade your heart? Yeah. This is so beautiful. Yeah. I love God. He's amazing. Yeah. Um, talk about cars. Al, are you ready for this? <laughs> you know, my favorite car is a Mercedes-Benz GT63 V8 bi-turbo AMG. <laughs> There's not a better car than that. I'm sorry. You start that thing's engine, you hear something. It's not like you start an electric car, there's nothing. <laughs> I mean, there's nothing. <laughs> we love you. We love you, Al. <laughs> we love your car. <laughs> huh? uh, get back to preaching. <laughs> That's true. Anyway. But you know, I, I want to explain to you something. Faith is like the engine that drives your life. Uh, it's the faith machine. Isn't that awesome? You got a gas tank that is full. It's your spirit, man. It's full. It's not like you have to fill it up. It's always full. Yeah. Never can, it can never get empty. It's running. And that engine run on fire. How many of you agree with me on that? No. There's only one thing that needs to happen. You need to ignite it. And that's repentance. And you know what? You don't even do it. It comes automatic because the goodness of God leads us to repentance. It's an automatic thing that happened. You, you hear the goodness of God. You immediately start up. Are you with me? It's like it just happened. And, and the Mercedes Benz, once you know what's going on there, it's easy to start that thing. You, when you buy me that car, that person who is here, just remember to put the service plan in for the next four years too because it's very expensive when you pull that car in there. For an oil change, you pay already a thousand bucks. I just want to keep that in mind. Anyway, I'm, I'm just... But, but, but me and Kathy came back from Branson when we, we were here. We had a family gathering here. We came back. We went back home. And the next moment, my car began to miss. Uh, our little Jeep began to miss and, and it miss. So now you begin to think a lot of things. First you think, okay, maybe there is dirty gasoline in the car. I remember we want to bless a pastor in Brazil when we were there. He bought us his car. We were four pastors together in the car driving. And we want to bless him and fill his car up. Um, and all the cars basically in, in Brazil run on ethanol. And we didn't realize that this is a, this is a gasoline car. This is a petrol car, as we say it in South Africa. And we put ethanol in that engine. <laughs> By the grace of God, that car survived. The engine didn't. I, I, we were praying, man. This car, we go down the street with this. We were like all four of us. <laughs> we are going down the street. There, there was something that the, 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 the gasoline was polluted. Um, me and Kathy had a miss on the engine, and now you, now you get frustrated because every now and then the car is missing. <laughs> the car is missing, and, it, and we need to go home because she worked remote. She needed to open up her computer, and we were going. And this is exactly the, the, the thing that happened when, when circumstances and negativity, like Connie call it death, when we allow death to come, it's like it begins to mess with your spark plugs, and you begin to miss. Uh, your engine begin to mess. I know I, I was running as a, as, a, as a legalistic guy. I was running on like three cylinders, but I was actually an eight cylinder guy. Are, are you with me? And a lot of people run. This is a simple illustration, but a lot of people run on two or three cylinders. In the meantime, you are an eight cylinder or a 12 cylinder by turbo. Are you guys with me? But God is coming passionately to restore you, to restore the spark plugs and the cylinders and everything so that you can run. 
Are you guys with me? And I honestly believe that God is busy coming after things, you know, since 1994. Uh, um, uh, 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 we, are, we are into this grace message. It changed my heart. But, and, and over that period of time, you will agree with me that, that, that there was times that we were sad. There was times that we struggled with forgiveness. There was times that we, that, that we were negative. There was times that we allowed things to come into God's garden because your heart, I use the engine here, but if you study Jesus and you study how he teaches, you will realize that your heart is actually... The garden, it's the meeting place. It's God's private paradise. Amen. And let me tell you something. He's coming after it with a passion. And, and there was times that I allow stuff in my heart, but then he come with a vengeance against the darkness that I have allowed in my heart. And how many of you agree with me that light shine in darkness and the darkness did not comprehend it? He is coming every time with a revelation. Just as I think I've lost it, another revelation pop up. Woo! And, and the light is on in the garden again because God is not going to allow that stuff die in His garden. You're His garden. Are you with me? It so passionately touched me these things because I realized uh, Bonnie Duell's testimony. How many of you know Bonnie Duell? Her, uh, her husband, Dave, some of you know Dave died. But she told the story where she was in this conference and with Jim Richards. And um, Jim Richards do this heart physics. I don't know if you guys know that. I, I've never done the course, but I heard about it. But, but he do a thing with them that they meditate and they go with an elevator down and stuff like that. And... And Bonnie Duhal uh, uh, says she, she did the steps and the next moment she was in the garden. And she saw Jesus. And she said that there's two pools of love that she saw in his eyes. I'm telling you, God loves you, man. He's not going to let you down. It doesn't matter where you are. Sorry, I'm a little bit emotional here. Um, there is no greater power than the power of revelation that hid your heart. That thing your heart is designed, it's passionate to run. <laughs> your life, you can't live above the condition of your heart. That's why God, how many of you agree with me that we say grace is a divine influence upon the heart? But your heart is not just spirit. People are confused with that. I have to say it every time. Many people say, I give my heart to Jesus. No, you did not. He came after your heart. And he touched your heart. And he passionately is busy transforming your heart. He is directing you to look into his face so that you can transform. This gospel is amazing. Man, I... I, I, I <laughs> You are God's God. I want to read this out of the TPT Bible. Can you forgive me for that? Um, they are throwing out this, this, this. Listen, most Bibles postpone the things that God has already unveiled. So if you're going to bring me a Bible that is the perfect Bible, what do they want us to do? Stick with the old King James Version? I thank God for the old King James Version because if it was not there, we would probably never been where we were. I'm not judging any Bible. I'm just saying, I use the translation that suits my message. Are you with me? You know? You know? So, I, I got great things out of the TPT. I don't know about you. And out of, and out of the message... And out of the mirror Bible. If you're a pastor and you can't discern, go home. Really. We can discern. Come on. We know. Man, there's some stuff there. Ah, oh, no, I don't believe that. Let's go on. The, oh, what's the Greek saying? You know? But listen to this in Song of Songs chapter 4. Verse 12 to 15. I love this. He says, my darling bride. I believe he talked to the body of Christ, but I also think he, believe, he, he talks to you personally. Yeah. Jesus is the bridegroom. Yeah. You're the bride. He's coming after you. Yeah. Like, like a bridegroom that's passionately in love. You're special. Yeah. Uh, he says, my private paradise. 
Thank you for enthusiasm. You may sit down now. Huh? Whoa! I'm his private. We are his private paradise. Fastened to my heart. A secret spring that no one else can have are you. My bubbling fountain hidden from public view. Man, I can stand there in Kruger's or wherever and people can look at the shell, but inside, I'm a secret garden (laughs) of God. And they don't even know it. There's stuff growing in me. Good stuff, not bad stuff. Good stuff is growing in me. Are you with me? See, do you hear that word with? I don't say it the same way as other people. You say with or something like that. I say with. Are you with me? A guy sent me a t shirt, a friend of mine, and it's written on the Are you with me? W I F F. Are you with me? <laughs> he loves me. I love him too. Big old, big old born again Amish guy came out of the Amish background. He said, uh, he flees so far away from his family, they couldn't find him. I said, how far? He said, an hour. <laughs> I said, what do you mean? He says, well, it's not easy with a horse and buggy. <laughs> I'm just joking. I love them. I love them. So, he say, he, he say, what a perfect partner to me now that I have you. God see you as a perfect partner. Isn't that awesome? He says your inward life is now sprouting, bringing forth fruit. (laughs) See, we look at our hearts and we think it's so negative. I'm so bad. No, he don't see that. He sees sprouting and he sees growing and he's he's tending his garden and he's changing. He's he's working there. Isn't that awesome? This is not a mind thing that you work out. This is the Spirit of God that is consuming your heart with with love and grace and mercy and loving kindness. I love this. Yes. What a beautiful paradise. Listen to this. What a beautiful paradise unfolds within you. In that moment, I, I stand in front of the mirror and I say, you are so special, Peter. You know, it was a time that I hated myself. Thank you, Jesus. And you know why that was? Because of legalism. And then he say, when I'm near you, I smell aromas of finest spice. For my clusters of my exquisite fruit now grow within this garden. (laughs) Oh man, this so open your eyes and your heart the way that Jesus sees you as his beloved. As the Father sees you as his beloved. You're special. I don't want to read further because there's some tough words there. Can I do that? Can you? It's not long, but I believe you can hold through this. It says, here are the nine. (laughs) <laughs> that is in your garden. Pomegranates, did I pronounce that right? Yes. Of passion. Branches of secret woods. Oh, oh sorry, sorry, sorry. I must hear. Henna from heaven, spikenard, so sweet. Saffron shining, fragrant calamus from the cross. Sacred cinnamon, branches of scented wood. Myrrh like tears from a tree. And aloe, I hope I pronounced it right. As eagles ascending. You are a fountain of gardens. A well of living water springing up from within you. Like a mountain brook flowing into my heart. Woo! Man, I, I, just, I just... You know what? I, I believe when Paul wrote his letters. He just gave little statements. But I believe that the people in his culture and the people that he planted that church to, they saw the whole picture because he gave a statement 
out of the old covenant and then they know. Whoa, this is when he teaches that. I believe they understood these things. I believe it was part of his teachings. He was revealing Jesus out of the old covenant to them. Are you guys still with me? So I believe that they had the deeper understanding when they wrote the letter. Oh, we forgot when Paul was teaching on that thing. Oh my goodness, how is it possible that the law could have influenced us to this point that we forget this deep, wonderful things? Are you guys still with me? Um, you know, I, I, Paul, Paul, Paul made this statement, and, and I love it, and he... And I don't have to sit and teach you about theological stuff or what is the, the heart and the mind and the spirit and stuff. You guys are pastors. You know everything. Um, you will figure it out. So, but you know, Paul, Paul makes a statement in 1 Corinthians 3, 9, and he say, For we are God's fellow workers. You are God's garden. You are his, God's building. Isn't that awesome? Isaiah had a glimpse of this uh, garden under the old covenant when he prophesied. And he say in Isaiah 43, 18 to 19, and he say, do not remember the former things. Come on, people, do not remember the former things. He's talking about two covenants here. The old covenant and the new covenant. He's talking about, he says, nor consider the things of old. Behold, I love that word, behold. Because there's something that needs to happen. The eyes of the heart needs to open up that we can begin to behold. Amen. Behold, I will do a new thing. That's the new covenant. Now it shall spring forth. Shall you not know it? I will even make a road in the wilderness and rivers in the desert. He had a little glimpse of the new covenant heart where God come and he say, I'm making everything new. Hallelujah. He says, now it shall spring forth. I like that word spring. It's awakening. Spring is coming. Me, me and Kathy are so desperate coming out of Minneapolis, driving down here. Can we just see something green now? Can we just see, can we just see something? So, so, oh, it's still not green. Dang. You know, because we are looking for the awakening. Are you guys with me? That spring that is coming. And this is what happened when we embrace the new covenant in its fullness. There's an awakening in us that God's garden come alive. And this is his meeting place. It's the secret place where he meet with you. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. And then he come here in Isaiah, and, and in Isaiah 61, verse 11, we know that verse. But listen, I want you to see this today. This is so important. He say, for as the earth brings forth its bud, as the garden causes the things. What is he saying? He say, the garden causes the things sown in it to spring forth. Your heart has the power and the ability to bring forth. It depends on what is being sown in there. But even if you sow crap in there, he comes with a passionate love and vengeance of light to take that out of his garden and say, I'm not going to allow this to grow in my private paradise. This is my place where I meet my kids. That's why he's not leaving. You go around this thing, he's just coming back every time. Every time he come back. Whew. Jesus. I love you, Lord. He's coming back. The Holy Spirit is working in us. Jesus says, when he come, he will glorify me because he will take what belonged to me and make it known to you. The Holy Spirit is doing this. He's coming with God's passionate love. He sent people into your life preaching the gospel, which is the revelation of God's love for you. Are you with me? They come and they preach and they preach until people pop up open and say, whoa. I love what Arthur said last night. It is that it, no, I don't love it. I mean, I, mean I, I love the sermon, but the statement that he made about that, that religion is so rooted and grounded in our culture today that it's... But I'm telling you, God is bigger than that. And God is bigger than our hearts. You agree with me on that? And He is changing hearts and He is bringing restoration in our lives. Amen. So um, I, 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 I want to go into the passion of God. I, I've laid that as a foundation. So uh, I want to go into the passion of God. I, I've, uh, I, uh, I was with Bill. Uh, uh, Al and in, 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 in Carla invite me to preach there. They're, they're celebrities. You agree with me on that? <laughs> Have you seen them dressing and stuff? They're, they're called for Hollywood. <laughs> I think you need to go and preach there. You will make an impact. But... 
they, they invite me and, and um, I have to fill in forms. They are very organized. I love that of you, brothers. You, you, you challenge me, man. I love that. You have to, I have to fill in. They make sure that it's not a, not a fly-by-night coming here. And I, fully, I actually write my life away because if I do anything wrong, I can maybe end up in jail. You know, that's, <laughs> that's a joke. But with Bill, it's different. Let's do this. Are you with me? <laughs> we are all different. We do our things different. And I went to Bill's uh, uh, church, and um, I'm picking on you. Okay. I'm, I'm picking on you. <laughs> I love you. But, but anyway, uh, I, w- I promise I won't do it again. But I have a short span of attention. So <laughs> Anyway. Um, I went to Bill, and I, I was not with him for quite a while. You know, we'd go with all kinds of stuff that we'd go through in life. And I sat there the morning. I didn't know that he sent out a, 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 a message to his leadership uh, of a burning heart. And uh, he says, God is a consuming fire. Let's trust him today for his fire. And, and, and Kenny, that is here, where's Kenny? Kenny had a, had a vision, that, this stuff that I heard afterwards of Jesus with a candle walking and light people up, you know. And, um, uh, um, but but I'm, I'm just going to be honest. Uh, I sit there and I look at the people that are sitting in the audience, and, and I'm serious, I judge them. Because some of them was three weeks ago in drugs, and they're free now. Some of them are, was lost and homeless. It's... Man, brother, you have a very special ministry. He, they are reaching, the, they're down and out, and the people are just like down out there. It's, it's deep, man. That's, that's a very special anointing, you and Angela. It's God bless you. The love that you guys have for those people, it's just, it's amazing. But, but I'm honest. I said that, ah, oh, man, they are not going to get anything. Can you believe that I think that way? I said, I, I need to change my message and make it simple or something. I don't know. So now I'm sitting here and I'm judging the people. Can you believe that? And, 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 and while we worship, and the worship is powerful there too, we worship. And in the middle of the worship, the compassion of Jesus came over me for that people. Whew. And I burst out in tears. I think I prophesy over everybody, except for the guy with the cowboy hat in the sound booth. But... But his life was changed in spite of, but, but God moved, man, God moved. And I, and I realized again, the compassion of God. Compassion is not something that we work up. God is restoring compassion in the body of Christ. Are you, are you with me? Jesus was moved with compassion several times. Where did he get that? That is his father. He said, me and my father are one. It's the father working through me. He was moved with compassion and he healed them all. He was moved with compassion and, and he, he saw them that they are lost like sheep without a shepherd. And then he turned to the disciples and said, I send you in. Because he realized that he knows that they need help. They need, they need shepherds. Amen? Yeah. And Jesus was moved with compassion uh, 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 a big time. And then I was moved with compassion. I just realized again every time that God's compassion is moving. And I don't think it's something that we woke up. It's something that just happened by the Holy Spirit. You have compassion in you. Yeah. God's compassion is already in you. It's not when will God's compassion come. We have it. Uh, William Booth says, William Booth made a statement. He says, I, I'm not waiting for a move of God. I am the move of God. <laughs> are, you, are you with me? We are the move of God. All of us sitting, you're already a move. I love that. <laughs> God is good. I'm going to go into a little bit of theology here. Can I do that? And um, forgive me if. And I'm going to be fast. I don't want to take your time. People get hungry. Jeremiah get hungry here. He's, <laughs> he don't see fudge anymore. He hear the word lasagna. It's just, going, going. it's just going here. He's like into it. But there's, a, there, there's certain verses in the Bible that bothers me. How many of you had that? You, you, you look at it and it's like, okay, it's in the context, it doesn't make sense for me how they have translated it. Are, are you with me? So, but, but it doesn't matter how you believe it, but this is how I see it. Um, Paul is in Galatians, and he is talking to the Galatians, and he said to them in chapter 3, 
And I'm going to bring the other verses in just to make it more clear. And he says there, are you so foolish having begun in the spirit? Are you now being made perfect by the flesh? Have you suffered so many things in vain, if indeed it was in vain? Now, that word suffer there, uh, um, I, 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 I agree. How many of you agree with me when you suffer, you have, you have feelings? Suffering brings feelings. So I believe that, that that's why they translated it in there, you know. But Paul also used in Galatians 5, 11, in the same context and in Galatians 6, 12, he used also the word suffering. And this time he say, if, if, I, if I preach circumcision, why do I suffer persecution? And then he challenged them and he said to them, you, persec- you circumcise yourself so that you don't suffer persecution. He challenged them. And that word in the Greek there, <coughs> excuse me, for, for, for suffer persecution is diako. It's a different word. But the word that he used here is pasco. And pasco, the first translation that they give in the Greek is suffering. But the second translation is passionate feelings, the the wild word is passionate feelings, and the dictionary is passionate feelings. So I'd rather go with passionate feelings because the, the, he's not talking about suffer persecution here. He's talking about something different here. He's talking about the fact that they have lost their passionate feelings. Wow. That's what he's really saying there. And if you study the passage, you will see he's, he, he, he is reasoning with them how the law robbed them of, uh, of, of righteousness because he said I'm crucified with Christ it's not I that live anymore but Christ live in me and the life that I live in the flesh I live by the faith of the son of God who gave himself for me because he loved me I do not set aside the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ for if righteousness come through the law Christ died in vain you know these verses then he say who bewitch you who cast a spell upon you you Galatians that, uh, whom the truth was revealed to was Jesus Christ, now listen to this, not crucified, the, the Bible say here, among you, but the Greek word is in, was Jesus Christ not crucified in you, so they experienced the work of the cross in them, setting them free of the law. Because Paul says, I'm crucified, I, I'm not trying to be righteous. I'm not trying to be righteous, I'm, I've been crucified, my life is crucified to that kind of lifestyle, I am righteous because of His grace, and grace comes through the finished work of Jesus Christ, so grace has done a work in them, and, and, that, that, uh, and, and the, the, the cross has done a work in them, that set them free, how many of you agree with me, that the law robs you of feelings? Yes. The law robs you of passion, if you are under the law, you, you <laughs> and rules and regulations, doesn't matter how you call it. Are you with me? If you are under that, you are robbed of love. I, when I was in religion, I didn't love people. I tell them I love them. <laughs> I lie. <laughs> I didn't even love myself. How could I love them? And I was wondering if God really loved me. Are you with me? Because of legalism, because of the law, it robs you of all passion, all compassion. The feelings, the passionate feelings, it robs you of it. <clears throat> Still with me? That's why he said to them, did you receive the Spirit by the works of the law or the hearing of faith? Are you so foolish having begun in the Spirit, now you try to be perfect by the flesh? Have you suffered so many things in vain? Did you have passionate feelings in vain? Now you have lost it. <laughs> Are you still with me here? Maybe you didn't learn it in Bible school, but you learned it from Peter Swart today. And from Connie. But God is bigger than this. Are you with me? God is bigger than this. So he's challenging them. He's bringing them back. He says, come on guys. And then he said, the Spirit supply, will supply, uh, uh, he will supply the Spirit among you and do miracles does he do it by the works of the law of the hearing of faith. I honestly believe that God is restoring passion to the body of Christ because I honestly believe that love is the channel to God's miracles. 
I honestly believe that, that people will be just in our meetings and be healed. And they ask, yeah. how did this happen? Yeah. We didn't even touch them. Yeah. I went to that church. I came back. I'm healed. Yeah. There's so much love in that place. Yeah. <laughs> this is what's happening with Bill <laughs> in his church right now. Awesome stuff is happening. Are you guys with me? Yeah. I use that with a lot of, a lot. See, Jesus, Jesus, John the Baptist say, I love this, John the Baptist say, and I'm almost done, John the Baptist say, he who comes after me will baptize you with the Holy Spirit and fire. I always wonder about that. The Holy Spirit and fire. And we always connect it to power because when the Holy Spirit came on them in, 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 in Acts chapter 2, it was flames of fire that was on top of them, you know. So we connected. Jesus said, you will receive power when the Holy Spirit come upon you. So we connected to power. But I don't think this is what it really means. So we dig deep to find what's going on here. The Webster's Dictionary from 1882. <laughs> That's how far we went back. A lady come and told me in Greg's church about it. <laughs> That's how far we went back to find out. The Webster's Dictionary from 1882 says that fire, and one of the meanings of fire is to love someone passionately. So I believe Jesus was, will baptize us with the Holy Spirit and a passionate love for people. See, if you are full of the passionate love of God, you don't struggle with forgiveness. Well, last moments like, Jesus, if I can just slap him now. You know, it, it's just hold me back, Holy Spirit. It's just, we have our moments. I know, I know. I know we have our moments. I'm not there anymore. I was there. Now I'm like, I'm not like Nick when he's on the highway. It's like, don't drive with him. Like, gee. People in Minneapolis is rough, man. You have to forgive people every day. Jeez. <laughs> every day. It's like Kathy is teaching me. <laughs> One day I was sitting in the left lane, and we were just talking, the two of us, minding our own business. <laughs> Next moment, I look in my rear mirror, and the guy behind me, I don't even see the grill of his car. All I see is his window. That's how close he is. And he sat there like this. You know, and, I, and I'm like, what? So, at first the thought came through me, if I hit the brakes hard now, I will tell Kathy, brace yourself, you don't have a whiplash, just brace yourself. If I hit the brakes hard now, he will smack me. He will pay, not me. Are you with me? But the Holy Spirit didn't take me that direction. I turn over and then he even swing into me and... Show me a sign that Jesus will never show you. And, and, I, and I wanted to bring it up too, and my arm was like, oh, if, I, if I can just bring him over, it's just like, I will give him a double whammy. Are you with me? We go through moments. We go through moments. Yeah, 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 yeah. It was a Tesla. <laughs> uh, uh, actually, it was a minivan. It was a, it was a minivan. But I want to read the last verse out of the TPT. And um, just to encourage you. Are you blessed with this so far? Yes. Uh, but, but you know what? These stupid things that happen in life can't quench the fire of His love. Amen. It's impossible. It can't. You know, I, I, I go through a tough situation. Um, um, and uh, there, I have a friend up in Canada and my special wife, Kathy. Um, uh, on, on, uh, <laughs> that's, a, that's a language barrier. <laughs> that's a language barrier right there. See, they, they, they used to... Uh, um, he would send me a text message every morning out of Canada. And he would, and I was depressed, I'm honest, I was depressed. 
and he would send me a text message, and that text message was coming against everything that tried to contradict my identity in Christ. And sometimes me and you need that from a brother and a sister. That they speak into our lives the very things that try to contradict the image of Christ in us, of who we are in Christ. You agree with me on that? That's why the sharing of your faith come effective by the acknowledgement of every good thing which is in you in Christ. You know, that's why because of you, the Holy Spirit, the preaching of the gospel, we can't lose. We will always come out on top. (laughs) Thank you for enthusiasm. (laughs) But but that's what perseverance is. Perseverance is to prevail in the midst of everything that tries to contradict who you are in Christ. You just don't allow that. No, that's not me. Get another donut, like I told Tony. Tony's like, yo, I'm here special, you are here. I said, get another donut. (laughs) Now listen, I'm reading you this last verse and then I'm done. In Song of Songs, chapter 8, verse 5 to 7, here he is talking to his bride again. This is so powerful, listen to this. He says, who is this one? She arises out of the desert. This is the body of Christ. Clinging to her beloved. Woo-hoo. When I awaken you under the apple tree. How many of you agree with me that Jesus is busy awakening people? Yes. And he is awakening people out of their sleep. And he is awakening out of their yes. dryness that they are in. <laughs> he he say, um, as you were feasting upon me. I awaken your innermost being with the travail of birth as, I lo- as, as you longed for more of me. Fasten me upon your heart as a seal of fire forevermore. <laughs> I love that. This living consuming flame will seal you as my prisoner of love. Thank you, Jesus. My passion is stronger than the chains of death and the grave. All consuming us as the very flashes of fire from the burning heart of God. There is not death or any grave that can hold you back from the love of God. Nothing die in God's garden. (laughs) It looks like maybe. No. I preach, Arthur, Arthur just introduced me to the message of grace. Can I tell you the story? Is that time? What's the time? I don't know if I must tell you the story. I only preach 38 minutes. Huh? You're only 40 minutes in. Tell you this story. I was just found grace, so now I'm like a bull in a china shop. I don't know it all. Only thing that I know is God loves me unconditionally. I'm forgiven for eternity. You tell that to a guy who just came out of, gra- out of religion that is not really straight here. Yeah. It's not good. <laughs> <laughs> so I got an in- invitation to go and speak at this ladies' camp, women's camp. I was really honored. And it's a Pentecostal church. And, um, and I thought, this is amazing. But I didn't know what kind of Pentecostal church it was. This is now 1994 there around. <laughs> So I prepare, man, I get ready, man, I'm going, I'm going to, this is what women need. That's what I thought those days. Women need to hear this passionate, wonderful, amazing stuff. I'm going to blow them this weekend with this because in my culture in South Africa, it's a different culture, you know. I don't know what I'm talking about. Some of the men in South Africa can be hard. And, uh, but anyway, <laughs> when I arrived there, all of them had long dresses on, no makeup, and buns on the back of their heads. Now, I don't have a problem if you don't have makeup, that's all, but I'm telling you, if you're in a place where there is 200 of them, <laughs> this, this is a different ball game. Are you with me? You know, <laughs> this is not good. And I said, Jesus, where am I? And suddenly it dawned on me. So we had lunch first, and the pastor's wife was sitting right, right next to me, and she says, I'm so excited God sent you. And I thought, no, 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 I don't think God sent me. I'm not so sure about this. This is not going to end good here today. 
I will preach maybe one sermon and you guys will, you will, you will lead me out of here. You know. So I start preaching that night. You ever been in a tennis game? Um, people go with their heads like this. Have you seen that? So when I make a great statement, the people, all of them look at the pastor's wife that was sitting here. They all go like this. How would her reaction be? And then come back to me. And their eyes is like eyes of deer and headlights. They are like sitting like this. And then when I make a statement, they all look at her. And, and, and then, then they look back and it's like, this is not good. So when I came to the end of my sermon, finally, so I said, okay, maybe I can just pray for someone here, or maybe we can heal someone here, or something like that, you know, something special happened here. So I said, anybody who needs healing? Anybody? Nobody? Nobody responded. And finally, from the back, here comes a woman walking up with a short dress on. Not that I look for short dresses, but in a situation, in a, in a situation like that, it's very obvious. Are you with me? <laughs> She, and, and she had, her hair is perm, and she got makeup on, and I told them, and she said, where were you? I, I needed you. I needed backup here. <laughs> you, you know, and she come and stand in front of me, and she said, I, I need prayer. Now, everybody look at this situation, and I got a vision. In a moment, I got a vision. A weird vision. How many of you sometimes get a vision, and it's weird, and, but the Holy Spirit just say, say it. Say it. So I saw a young tree that is blossoming, chopped off, and fell. But when it fell, it come up and grow again and bear fruit. I thought, this is weird. I'm in a weird spot. This woman, I don't know. Maybe the Holy Spirit said it. And it's prompted on. And I said, I want to tell you this vision. And you can do what you like with it. I told her. She dropped on her knees, begin to cry. That other woman come over the seats like I'm the last person with hockey tickets in this world. Are you guys? They come over those seats towards me and I'm like, what is going on here? I mean, some of them climb with their dresses over. I see the one woman take a dress like this to get over the seat. And they're coming for the front and I'm like standing there. What is going on here? So they, we need prayer. And so I look at this first woman. I said, what happened here? She says, well, we understand your vision. Her son took his life. And everybody was preaching he's in hell. But we understand your vision. In God's garden, stuff don't die. Are you with me? Oh, man, this, this was big. That place was turned upside down that night. I stayed for the weekend. They never invited me again. I mean, <laughs> the, pastor, the pastor came Saturday night. And, and I mean, he gave me the evil eye. You know, it's like, it's all good. I mean, but the seed was planted. That's right. The point that I want to make here is, your garden is not going to die. That's right. That's right. <laughs> You're going to keep on flourishing. Yeah. You are God's private paradise. You are burning in Him. Yeah. And He can't get enough of you. Right. If you want to, let's stand. Um, I don't know what to do now. <laughs> but I have a little bit of time here. And I, and I felt like, um, I don't know, I, I felt like... Um, Jeremiah jumped ahead of me a little bit this morning. Sorry. <laughs> but Arthur and Kathy, come here. I, I, you are on the spot. Come. <laughs> if you guys don't mind, can we take like five, ten minutes? I, 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 I felt like, and it's not only Arthur. I want Greg and Sherry to come too. And I can probably call out a lot of people here today. I, I, can, I can maybe... You know, I want to do it specifically because Arthur really, um, all of you are special. I've, after I preach this sermon, you don't have a problem of rejection. Right. No. No. Right. Some of them look at me. No, I'm not. No. 
Arthur introduced me to the message of grace, and he was, he was giving it actually to you very low last night because I know what is going on in South Africa. When he was preaching grace, it was only him. And even when he gave it to me, I told him one day on the phone what I think of the message of grace. I won't do that now. But, and, 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 um, uh, and I come around later on. But, but they went through a lot of persecution. They went, both him and Kathy. And, and he, he is a general, he was trotting the earth for ages. And I want to say to you, many times you feel like there's nothing happening. I cannot tell you, and I think there's a lot of people here in this place that will come and say to me, I have met someone that Arthur Manger's life has yeah. changed their lives. Yeah. Uh, Arthur Manger's have changed my life. Yeah. How many of you agree with me? Yeah. Yeah. And, and I, I just want to honor them today. And I want uh, uh, Jeremiah and some other people. And then Gregory... Um, uh, he was the first guy who invited me into the United States to come and preach here. And, uh, I mean, it happened miraculously on Facebook. Hey, we want your sermons. And then the next moment he put me up in a, uh, uh, in a, in a conference to minister. He ministered a lot. And we were really connected and things, things changes. But God is rebuilding things. And I just want to honor him and Sherry too. And I want Kathy to come and Jeremiah. How many of you can prophesy? Come here. We're going to prophesy over you guys. And we're, going to, we're just going to bless you guys. Amen. Who else can prophesy? Come, Buffy. And we, we, Bo, come on. You can prophesy. I know you can. And Emily and, uh, and, and we, just, we just want to bless you guys. And thank you for, for going through stuff and standing. There was tough times. But you stood. And... Um, and that doesn't ex exclude anybody here. On, you know, uh, I don't know most of you personally, but I honestly know that some of you go through some tough times in your lives. And, and God meet us at different places. I just, where's my beautiful wife? Oh, yes. yes. <laughs> <laughs> and and I, I, we're just going to start with Kathy and, and, and Arthur. You know, for them, it's not always easy. Their kids are in South Africa, and they travel back and forth, and... Their heart's desire is to see their family in the States yes. and uh, with them, yes. stuff like that. But it doesn't matter. Father, we just thank you today for Arthur and Kathy and their ministry. And Lord, the day of over the years went through some tough, difficult times, but you gave them the grace and they keep on preaching the gospel and planted the seeds and established people. And we just thank you for that this morning. And Lord, we just pray that you will give them words of encouragement today speaking over their lives, that will give them hope and direction for the future, Lord, and um, uh, uh, just, just encourage them, Father. We know that the prophetic gift is here, and we thank you for that. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Father. And I just hear the Holy Spirit saying to you, Arthur and Kathy, that the best is yet to come. Amen. And how you have laid down your life, and now you are bearing the fruit that he has planted in you. And it's going to be good because you were created for such a time as this. Mm -hmm. And everything, everything that was robbed and stolen is mm -hmm. coming back Amen. in full force to shine through both of you. Mm -hmm. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. I see doors opening. Doors opening that you never thought would open before. Mm. But they are swinging wide open. And the Lord is ushering you in and saying, Go, my son. Go, my daughter. And speak my passionate love to my people. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Kathy. I probably know Arthur just a little better just because of the conversations I've had with him. But... As I was praying for him, uh, I just I just felt like the Lord said, like, I heard the word laborious, sort of, you, you just work really hard behind the scenes, and a lot of people don't realize what you put into it. And mm. yes, I don't know yes. if this is speaking to you, but I feel like the Lord's saying, that, like, even sometimes you just, 
you work so hard that you're just exhausted. And maybe it's not just to do with ministry, but family, things like yes. that. And there's this season that's coming, it's just going to flow over. It's going to be a refresh. Yes. And you're going to be strengthened. And I think maybe you guys are already starting to enter into that, that refreshing season. Yes. But maybe the beginning of it, but 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 it's going to continue to increase. And, it, yes. and, and it's going to continue to strengthen you. And I just feel like the Lord has got a heart for you right now. Yes. And, 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 and I just feel like maybe you've been through a lot. I don't know mm -hmm. if it's ministry yes. one, but you've been through a lot. And the Lord mm -hmm. just like, can I just lay hands on you real quick? And just, okay, Thank okay. you. I'm trying to really start freshening over you right now. Father, we thank you. Mm. Hallelujah. You know, as a, as a minister, my, my wife is always behind the scenes. And people don't see her. They see me. But I know what she goes through. And I know what you mm. go through. And I know that it, I know that you carry a, a, a burden for your family, for your husband, for the ministry. But I just, right now, this be a season for you mm. to receive what the Father has deposited into you. This refreshing is oil. This oil from heaven is going to flow over your life, over your finances, over your ministry, over your family. Mm. That is here, like, I don't know, maybe some just some issues, maybe not issues is the word, but some problems with some kids or something. And the Father says that He's already shaping and molding mm. and twisting yes. back our heart back. Thank you, Jesus. Right like, like, you can let them go. Mm. You can let them go because He is already making a way for them to come back. Thank you, Jesus. I just want you to receive that refreshing. I want you to leave this call mm. strength and refreshing. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. When they were praying over you guys, I saw you two sitting side by side in the most beautiful garden, it, but it was a vineyard. Mm -hmm. And there were like, like when you see like him in France and, and Italy, the, the, the old, like almost castle looking places there in the distance. And it was just mm -hmm. the most beautiful place and it was yours. And y'all are sitting there, oh, and you both Jesus. had the most beautiful wine glasses I've ever seen. Like, I want them. Okay, they were, they were crystal, but they were like diamond. And every time you took a drink, it fell back up. Because God is not going to let it come out. Yes, And around you, your children. I saw the same children. thing. I saw the same thing. And they're the just children. happy. It was like at a wedding, but it wasn't. It was just your life. Yes. And they were just running and laughing, and every single one of them, all your hearts, all their hearts, mm. were right towards each other, and it was just mm. joy and peace. Amen. And I declare that over you in Jesus' name. Yes. Amen. So, hallelujah. Amen. 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 Yeah. Amen. I saw the same thing. I saw you both sit and I saw children, children playing at your feet, children crawling on your lap. People that you have touched coming back to you as a father and a mother. Mm. And giving back to you, just as just as children honor their parents, the ministries that you have touched are coming back and they're honoring you. Amen. And they're multiplying. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. Emily. It's much shorter, but it echoes that. And I just heard, um, praise God. The Father's heart has echoed through you. Like that is that is it. Amen. He sees Amen. you, and that is what he says. Your heart has echoed, and that you're going to hear it. Amen. Jesus is it. Listen now. Amen. Amen. It's good. Two more. Two more. It's good. Yeah. Um, two other things I saw. I totally forgot. I was just in the moment in the garden. I wanted to be in your garden. Um, um, I saw a huge bullhorn, like an old-fashioned, like, you know, the drill sergeant bullhorn, and your words were going all over the earth. And the whole earth, after that, changed and I saw a landscape where there were all the, all the nations and cities just had all these huge walls. And it was as if like, when you see like a nuclear bomb and how it just levels everything, it was as if a bomb had gone off. And, and I'm, I think it was attached to your message, but all the walls crushed, just, they just crushed and there was just a cloud of dust and then it was gone. And the whole earth was just there in its perfection. And so I, I don't know if that pertains to walls that have been inhibiting your children from coming, or I, I, I had a sense there was some of that, but I also believe it was for all of us that have been, uh, had walls removed because yes, of the message yes, you have given yes, us, yes. and I just thank you for that, because that's personal to Bruce thank and I. Mm -hmm. We've had walls Amen. removed, so. Amen. Amen. Jeremiah, and then we pray for Greg and Sherry. Um, I just see you stepping into a new role of leadership. Um, you have occupied many different platforms, but the Lord is creating your platform. Mm -hmm. um, and in order to step into this role of leadership, 
uh, that God is bringing into your life, you're going to have to sever some ties from other platforms so your platform can grow. You don't want to do that because you love people, but you're called to a specific people. And uh, if they can't hear the voice, the uninhibited voice of Arthur Minges, then they're not going to step into the fullness of what they're called to. And so your commitment to not pull back on the gospel has brought you to a place of separation. But it's not for the purpose of separating you. It's for the purpose of creating a new place where other people can go. Amen. Amen. Those that have been separated. Yes, Lord. Yes. Amen. Amen. Let's pray for Greg and Sherry. Thank you, Arthur. Thank you. Father, we thank you for Greg and Sherry. We thank you for their pastoral heart, their yes. teaching ministry there. We thank you, Father, that you have planted them in that area where they are, but it's for more, much more than that. We just thank you for that, Father. We praise you that what you have started, you will complete, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Um, I, just, I see you, and it's as though you've studied late at night. It's very late. It seems very late. It seems like things are near an end. God says, no, there's, it's not near the end. It's early morning. It's early morning. It's time to wake up. It's early morning. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. Well, you know, when Jeremiah said, when you reached out to him, that he needed that. Right? I don't know if you remember when you reached out to me, but I needed that. Like, I, I felt alone. And I love both of you. I don't just see you as ministry friends, I see you as friends. I know you and I call, talk to each other, it's about different stuff, but I feel like at any time in my life, if I need to call somebody, I can call Gregory Reacher. And so, I love hanging out with you. You know, when I first when I first came to Grace, I was just coming out of legalism, and I had this expectation I put on myself that I should walk a certain way, act a certain way, because it's what I came out of. I used to work, I even used to work at Super Time Church. That's what I'm preaching now. <laughs> but when I got around Gregory Reaper, I could just be myself. Hallelujah. And it was so free. Mm -hmm. and, uh, I got around Peter Sword. I could just be me. And uh, that's why I fell in love with you guys. Because like, I don't really fit the Christian mold. Uh, I, I, yeah. <laughs> but, but because of you guys, it's just like, it let me, I just, you know what? I can just be me and do mm. this thing. And Amen. So I love you. And I love Amen. you guys. Both of you. Amen. Amen. <laughs> Yeah, you're the first guy that ever kissed me. <laughs> 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 Amen. I I just I just see that you guys uh, built built a building and and then you you put the roof on, but it's a flat roof. But every time you put the roof on, you start building again on top of that, and it's it's like a skyscraper. It's just going bigger every time. It's going higher. You never put the roof on. You never come to the end. It's just going higher and higher to the point that people cannot miss the building anymore. They see it. They can't. They can't pass by it and just say there is. There is. A, they. They. It draw attention immediately, and it's gonna. It's like the lamp in the darkness just begin to draw people. Begin to. I see leaders being drawn to it because the two of you are taller than what you think you are. You are high. Not, not because you are so humble that you God make you high, to put it that way. And um, I ser seriously see that in the spirit. Someone else? I actually <clears throat> kind of saw the same thing. I saw you in an elevator and going up really fast. And I heard, it's the planting of the Lord. And the other word that I got for you was that you guys are like mother mother and father to mm. many. Mm -hmm. You have that love and that nurturing anointing to take someone's hand and bring them up. We were privileged enough to have Dave and Bonnie Duell as our spiritual parents. And I see that anointing on you so mm. strong. Amen, amen. Just that you're lovers and you have so much grace to give. And I just see you going up and up and exploding all over your territory. Hallelujah. Amen. Thank you, Jesus. Um, when we started praying, I saw the vision that I shared with you before about the roof of the church just being ablaze um, and just a Holy Ghost 
fire, saw that. And then I saw you with your head thrown back laughing, like he, only he can. And, um, and it was just God's joy just yeah. coming out of you. And like we, we were told again and reminded again, the joy of the Lord is our strength, and it is your strength. Um, I saw the same vision she did. Um, and, and in my mind, it was like patriarch and matriarch, like oh, grandparents. And, yeah. and I saw your, your home and your church was a hospital. And it, it like yeah. turned into a hospital. And there were just yeah. huge wards of people. Jesus. And, you know, people just kept coming in and coming in and coming in. And they, they were going out as fast as they were coming in because they were getting healed and delivered and made whole so Hallelujah. fast. Mm. And, and it was your love. Amen. It was your love healing them. Yes. Amen. And I will say this like Bill. I'm going to cry because y'all are the first people who my children felt around. When we felt free around you. The pastor's kids get special hurts. That's right. And they had special love and healing from you guys. Wow. So we're the Amen. first from the hospital. <laughs> Amen. All right. Thank you, guys. Connie, you have to close it down. <laughs> oh, one more word. Sorry, sorry, sorry. <laughs> uh, you know, you were so instrumental at uh, the beginning of what was happening in the Midwest and in so many people's lives here. We're all standing here as a result of your outreach to leaders and your heart for leaders. And so, I feel like within the past couple of years, there's been some hits that have tried to take you out, you know, of ministry and just out. And the reason those hits happened is because of all this fruit that's in this building right now. Amen. And I'm not trying to exalt the enemy. We don't do that. But we're not ignorant of his devices. Yeah. And so, the hit on you guys wasn't just a hit on you guys, it was a hit on all of us. Mm -hmm. In an endeavor to keep us from being united. Right. Grace. Right. We're united. united. Yes. Not grace divided. No. Yes. That came from your hearts. Yes. And that's still in your hearts. Yes. And you've completed a chapter of that. But there are more chapters to come. Yes, sir. Connie. Mm-hmm. <laughs>